Thank you, Chairman Kobe and board members, um, Superintendent Johnson, advisors, new and old. Uh, I'm excited about doing this. Uh, I want to talk about AppSeed. AppSeed is a program that is designed to improve literacy and language for children zero to four. I hope we don't have to call that a subgroup, but if this is, uh, if that's the way it is, then uh, it's in the form of an e-reader that is loaded with uh, applications that have been chosen by the Rowan Salisbury school system. Today, these, uh, these readers are being distributed in Rowan County uh, and Davie County uh, and with the hopes of being able to see improvements in our short-term goal, which is third grade assessment pass rate our mid-range goal, which is third grade reading test, and our long-range goal, which is economic improvement in the areas where uh, the, the seedling is, is produced. And I brought a copy. We uh, currently have about 3,500 of them that are uh, distributed with a goal of 6,000 by the end of this year. So we're, hard, we're excited about that. And I want to begin with the end in mind, and that is to say thank you. Uh, this APSE would not have happened without my participation in the State Board of Education, and I'll show you the three reasons for that um, right now. But the, the, the weird thing that happened was when uh, Governor Pat McCrory called me and asked me to be on the board, and I thought he was kidding. Um, <laughs> I thought he'd probably ask everybody he knew and three dead people before he got to me. <laughs> but he insisted he wanted to have somebody who had a business background and a little bit of uh, understanding of technology, and I kind of fit that bill. So I took it on. My wife and I are on about 20 different boards and committees, and we only do it with a two-way street. That is, if we can provide value and we can receive value. And in this case, with the State Board of Education, it's been disproportional. Um, I have provided a little value to the State Board of Education, but you have provided immense value to me in my life, and it's helped me and, uh, and my wife, Missy, uh, to really be able to define the mission in our uh, in our lives, but at least for me, for the next 34 years, I'm 60, and I intend to work till I'm 76 full time, uh, till I'm uh, um, 84. Uh, I intend to work part time till I'm 84, and when I'm 94, I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 write it down and make it true. So just write that stuff down. Got 132 quarters left. So here we go. The slide that you see in front of you is the, the three reasons that AppSeed started. When Patricia Willoughby would go over and over and over again about, uh, about pre-K, the value of pre-K, and then the, the, the uh, Nobel Prize winner in economics, uh, James Heckman, uh, study about the 7 to 10 percent uh, return on investment, uh, that, that got me charged up. I, I, I like to be able to hang, handle num uh, wrap around numbers, words, and pictures. The, uh, the second thing that happened was Buddy Collins invited this group to uh, Winston-Salem to hear the study by D uh, Dr. Wayne Foster on proficiency. If you're 50% or less uh, proficient in a grade, it takes you twice as long, and in my case, twice as many resources in, able, in, in order to catch up. Then the third thing that happened was when Dr. David Copenhaver, who has done two great things in his life, uh, he's a, an accomplished uh, uh, and well sought out uh, resource for early childhood ed ed education in, from Appalachian State University. He sent me the 30 million word gap study. If you haven't seen it, get it. It's, it's an easy read, page and a half, <clears throat> that can tell you the difference between uh, socioeconomically advantaged household versus a disadvantaged household and how that can happen so quickly in those first three to four years of life where there can be an achievement gap that just cannot be um, uh, uh, reduced or narrowed. Um, so he said, he said that, and that really was the, the basis for, uh, for what we started with, with APSE. Um, oh, the other, sec the other thing he did was uh, he married my sister. So that was really good. <laughs> Which one did I hit? The development of this, this is about a three-year-old program, and, and back in uh, 2015, if I can back it up to 2015, in November, we met the people from Apple Computer. That's why it's called, it was called Apple Seed Early Childhood, and we changed it to App Seed. But um, had a conversation with a, 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 uh, an Apple executive named Tanya Aldridge uh, from Greenville, North Carolina, and Tanya was able to 
um, and we, we shared the concept and, and um, she sprung into action, got six visionary concept oriented uh, professionals from Apple Computer met in Salisbury with Dr. Uh, Lynn Moody and about 40 other people to put together this concept. We, we, uh, that helped accelerate the program. We're indebted. I hope we can come back and use Apple products in the future, but it really was the baseline for, for the uh, creation of, of, of AppC. The second thing, well, right after that meeting, we found out that the, the uh, iPads that Apple provided were a Ferrari automobile when we needed a bicycle. So we, we didn't know what to do, and this is our uh, research and development department, Eliza and Sally uh, Lipscomb, who had a Kindle Fire that they were, uh, their uh, uh, father, who works for us, uh, uh, was showing us, and we said, that's it. So we spent the next year with Kindle uh, to use those, to provide those to uh, Head Start. Our pilot program was uh, two uh, Head Start, early Head Start. Uh, centers in Salisbury and, and that worked out but that was that was terrific and the, the seedling was too restrictive for us so we created our own so this is now a custom built device that we have put together we have designed can manufacture do the assembly and it's designed to just follow a low ES, uh, uh, SES uh, child uh, to have literacy apps only, as we, we've talked about, and we provide a three-year commitment that will, if the, the way this works is, a family comes to a hub, if you will, we'll talk about the distribution in a little bit, uh, and they are required to fill out an application with this, which is, includes a pledge that that child can can use the device for free. And all they have to do is respond to us every 90 days with our five question survey. Are you using it? How much are you using it? What's your favorite child's favorite app? What's it doing for your child? What's it doing for you? And those are the five questions. So we do that over and over again. Um, and and, and they, they fill out that and then they, they receive it for, for free. And um, we found this out last year that it wasn't, we didn't promote it enough that, that replacement is part of the of the model. No questions asked, replacement. So we found out that we didn't emphasize that enough and we had some children that it would break or it go black, uh, something would happen to it and uh, that ain't gonna happen anymore. And this is the voiceless demographic that we're supporting. The, the device is designed to be uh, read uh, to, with, from the child. Our target market is T-120 um, expected mother four months before uh, they have the child and to be able to have it to where they can play the 40 nursery rhymes that are on there to, uh, to the womb and, and early childhood, be able to read it read to the child with, uh, 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 in the early years. By the time the child becomes six months, 12 months, 18 months, it's participatory. And then uh, by the three and four year uh, time, the uh, child can do it themselves. Um, this, uh, the next couple slides are the business oriented slides, if you, if you will. So um, we're vertically integrated. I don't think you hear many nonprofits talk about being vertically integrated and, and, and striving to saturate the target market, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find every single uh, um, disadvantaged child in Rowan County and Davie County as fast as we can to provide them with the, these, these uh, three, uh, three years of support and one of the questions that people ask is, well, what do you do after the third year? We don't know. We ain't got that figured out yet. We're not that far. But I'm not going to take it away from them. You know, you can if you want to try to take it away from them. But there's something impactful in, in, in every one of these uh, parts of it. Um, the, the one I draw your attention to is the logistics part of it, which is uh, we have everything that comes in threes with AFC. We have uh, three principles that we use on, on, on the distribution of it. First, hub and spoke. Uh, we're more of a wholesaler, so we go to, to areas that have hopefully 100 or more uh, children that, that are, are served uh, in that, and that can be a daycare center most, uh, or, or a, a Head Start. Uh, the, the most popular one today in Davie and Rowan County is the health department. The Women, Infant, Children, WIC program is uh, a very uh, seems to be a very good spot uh, for for us to to reach the target markets. Um, 
and the cost of this, we, we've, we've got it, now we're, we're at our 6,000 uh, this year. Uh, right now the cost is $50 a year uh, per uh, child for three years. And the distribution of this, this is the partnerships we were talking about, the WIC program there, there on the left. Um, um, uh, the, the one I'm really, I'm proud of all of these. The, the Salisbury Pediatric Clinic, which sees 85% of our target market uh, in, in Rowan County, um, were contributors in the concept from the very beginning. The Rowan Salisbury School System with Dr. Moody, and uh, she's going to come up here in a little bit and talk about her experience with, with uh, APSE. It's, it's terrific. And the one on the top right, which we just uh, started, which is the Rowan Vocational Opportunities, which is a, um, a, a center where adults with cognitive challenges uh, can have jobs and do assembly. And they did all of our assembly, loading on the apps. It was just beautiful. It was go, go, goosebump kind of participation. Um, I, I heard a couple years ago the uh, difference between the, the uh, the nonprofit was looking, not looking for advocates anymore. They were looking for accomplices. So they didn't want somebody just to, to help them. Somebody would get involved. But these are the folks that are involved, and you can see your the seal from the State Board of Education is in there. Tig Lee and RB App Studios are the ones that provide the nonprofit apps. That's why this will never, you'll never see uh, an app seed seedling on the uh, Amazon for sale because we do, uh, everything we're doing is, is uh, free from that standpoint. The Mevin Foundation on the top right are the ones that sponsored all of Davie County, and we're indebted to them. Um, I, I share with this with you just as a template for uh, the types of measurements that we'll be going through, the short-term measurements. Um, this was just from a, a six months. We, we score on language and literacy. This is from a hit, the, the Head Start uh, people, the TSG, Teaching Strategies Goal, is a common measurement of, of um, outcomes for the, uh, for the children in uh, Head Start. And, and this does not provide year over year comparison, so I'm not going to count it or look at it for ne until next year. Now you can go ahead and give us credit for all of these uh, uh, the, the exponential increases in language and literacy. But uh, I'll leave it to you for that. This is all I need. And we, when we go to the Head Starts, when we go to the WIC program, when we find people on the street, when they come up and talk, uh, talk to us and hold it, holding the seedlings and talking about what they do there for their family, um, it's terrific. We, gave, we, we distributed 60 in 2016, 600 last year, 6,000 is the goal this year. We're already at 3,500, we're moving. We think we, we'll, we'll, we'll get to 6,000. But the very first one was given to a grandmother who, um, it took 15 minutes. The tutorial on this is supposed to be two minutes. It took 15 minutes to fill out the application and go through that. And I'm watching that and going, this isn't going to work, which I said a lot during the first 12, 14, 18 months of, of, of uh, APSE. But uh, she came back to our offices and announced about six weeks later, tears of joy saying this, this was really helping her child, but it was also helping her read. And it's like, wow, that's, that's good enough for me. So we run through walls and do everything we can on this. Uh, the money part of this is um, um, the, the, the private funding is primarily from, from uh, my wife Missy and I have been fortunate enough to be able to, to do that. Uh, uh, we're not betting the farm on this, but we're putting a lot of chickens into it uh, to do that. The advocates and the foundations have been very active, and public funding may be a, may be a choice. I'll let you all decide. Uh, we'll, 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 we're not ready to spend a lot of time on that yet uh, to do it. But it is, again, it's a three-year commitment by APSE to provide the device, the protected case, the uh, accessories, the research, and the replacement of that device, no questions asked, uh, to be able to, to, to be able to hopefully get it to where, what our end game is to make it to where that child is age proficient, age proficient for the first four years, then once they get into pre-K uh, pre or kindergarten and beyond, that they're grade proficient. Thank you, Dr. Wayne Foster, for that. Um, this is the hierarchy of reads, and it's uh, hard to read, of course, but it's, uh, as Tracy Zimmerman told me, there is no silver bullet 
in, in education, but there are some shiny ones, and we hope that uh, uh, we can be part of doing something. Our position on the hierarchy is the second from the bottom. The first one is you have to have, the child needs to be healthy and safe and have at least one loving adult, which I got from Dr. Uh, Ellen Essex on the whole healthy part of it. And then our responsibility is to, to on that second one to hopefully be able to have it to where those children that were normally in that 15 million word receiving of and some of those words being negative be closer to the 45 million and close that gap and then again and then eventually get to where it's a generational change where you have lifelong learners that uh, can be contributors to 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 the uh, to society and I'd like to call um, Dr. Lynn Moody up here to talk a little bit about what uh, it means to uh, Rowan Salisbury School System. I guess this first hour of the presentation, is, or first hour of the meeting, is brought to you by Rowan Sal Salisbury. <laughs> and I will share with you that Dr. Moody is on the board of APSE and was the first contributor to uh, 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 funds where she spontaneously, we were talked about this back in 2016, early 2016. At, at her office with her some deputy super, uh, superintendents there and she jumped out of her uh, seat and went over to her pocketbook and pulled out a hundred dollars and gave it to the deputies and said go buy a, go buy a Kindle I want to see how these things work <laughs> and, uh, so, and then she was the one responsible for getting uh, uh, Governor Hunt and his wife Carolyn uh, to Salisbury about a month and a half ago well, I can't say enough good things about Greg Alcorn, but you probably already know all of those things. In the world that we live in, um, well, there are a lot of people in the world that we live in in public education that come up and say to us constantly, how can I help you? Um, Greg is one of those very few people who actually do something about it. And it's just been a joy. From the beginning, he said, let's just do it. Let's just try it. Let's just work on it. We'll fix it as we go. So he didn't let any of those bumps in the road, and he kept all those partners involved as he continued to move forward. Um, we did about a couple months ago have a really great celebration where we pulled some key partners together, including Governor Hunt, um, who heard us talk about this at a legislative debriefing, and he, um, during that period of time, said, I've got to meet this guy, I've got to know more about this, and, and got very excited about the work we're doing or the work that Greg is leading, I should say. So I'll just, I'll just end with saying it's an honor and a privilege, and we all look to him. He models for us each day what education should be about. He does his research. He works hard to get it done, and we're just excited about the work that's being done and, and look forward to sharing it with you more. So I always invite you to come visit if you'd like to see the work um, on the ground. Thank you. My last slide is the one that, uh, that, that Trisha will be and, and all the rest of you would be uh, jumping on me on if I didn't do it. And that was what's the return on investment uh, on this. And I mentioned the three-year uh, uh, goals. So the BHAG means big, hairy, audacious goal. So the three-year the, the three goal is to get those kindergarten assessments up from 70% to 90%. Thank you, Medvin Foundation, for coming up with that, that uh, measurement that is a short-term Long term is we want to move the needle on uh, third grade, grade reading test. The whole theory of us, they build prisons based on third grade reading test. Well, you know, we've got some real numbers every day, in, at least in Ryan County, where it's at 22%. If we can move 22 to 50 on the socioeconomically disadvantaged children, if 50% of them, which we should be 22, comes 50, that raises all boats, that tide moves everything, and that would make a, a, a significant uh, impact into the third grade reading test, and you know that that read to learn, learn to read part, uh, learn to read, read part. And then the 10 year is also to be able to help our schools get higher grades on that A through F, and to also make an economic impact because people want to come to, to uh, communities where the, there are good schools. Thank you uh, for allowing me in the presentation, and thank you for being an unbelievable, significant part of this project. Thank you, Greg, uh, Lisa, and then uh, Mr. King. Well, as a kindergarten teacher, this presentation thrilled my soul. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, I'm a firm believer that the answer 
to third grade reading scores and, mm -hmm. and graduation rates lie in front loading mm -hmm. and providing resources for early intervention in the pre-K, K-2 levels. Um, and categorically, those are the areas where we see the least technology, we see the least funding for uh, resources, for curriculum support. So this is just a blessing. It really is. And, and I still have a little bit of heartburn from uh, the General Assembly's decision in June to uh, shift the $50 million of new federal funding that was intended. Um, to help working families afford quality uh, preschool, um, to use that money in, in other areas, that, that was a missed opportunity um, to really help provide slots for our, our children um, in the pre-K level and to, to get that foundation that they need to be successful. So I thank you, Greg Alcorn, for for getting this moving and for being a private source of funding. But I really would like our General Assembly to get on board and to help provide this for all children in North Carolina because it is greatly needed and it is the answer. So if we, uh, if we want to see success in North Carolina schools, then we need to, to put the money out there for funding. Mr. King. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd just like to say that um, in life, sometimes you meet people that deter you, who some people that make the world is doomed, but when people like Greg come to you like you see a person cares, a person makes a difference. So that's one great thing of it. Just not today, but before today, I've seen many characteristics that give me hope and definitely give our children hope based on what you decide because what you're doing is love and caring. And that's what all the kids want, just someone who loves and cares. Uh, I couldn't have on to you again. Thank you to others for what you've done with the leadership. I mean that from the heart. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you Amy, you want to? I love the part of your presentation uh, with the nod to workforce development and the vision that um, productive workers are, are today's preschoolers and that those statistics, I, I was so mad the first time I heard that third grade reading scores determine how we build our prison system. So the quantum leap for that is that there is an investment either on the front end or the back end. And we can be proactive and visionary and make that investment in our young folks so that they are the productive workers that our state needs. And I would a whole lot rather them um, be successful in school. Fifth grade, fifth grade scores are the things that determine high school graduation rates. Students who are not successful by the end of fifth grade have a five times greater chance of not graduating from high school. Students who do not graduate from high school are the citizens in our state who become dependent on our social services system and many times our prison system. So it is our choice. Thank you for the investment that you're making yeah. in young folks today so that they're productive for tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, but uh, Mr. McDevitt. <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, let me say this. Uh, that's, a, that's well said from Amy, who got a big service award for the work in our community yeah. this past uh, month. When I, when I read about that award, Amy, it says over a significant uh, uh, number of years, it's not just service, but, and so, uh, yeah, great coming from you. I correct, uh, at, the, at the risk of correcting uh, Greg on one matter, uh, the value, you talked about the value uh, to you from this board, uh, not even a close uh, equity. The value that you brought to this board institutionally, and to uh, and to me personally, I've had the opportunity to kind of follow this as it's gone along. As you and I have, we won't say where, but we've talked <laughs> about it uh, uh, evenings, and uh, uh, and for me, that's uh, that the value that you bring, uh, and this uh, this is a great initiative. It's a great program. It's it started with a blank sheet of paper and it's as Reggie just said, someone who cared and decided to have that manifest, uh, the heart manifest in, in, uh, in the community. Uh, but uh, you have brought tremendous 
value to this board. It's a great personal testimony of uh, you and Missy. And uh, and I'd say this, uh, the, the, the value to the board and to me and to other board members individually is, is obvious. There are gonna be numbers and numbers and numbers of kids and people and families who will never know your name or the name AFSI that this brings value to. For that, I just say thank you. Okay. Yes, Ms. Scott. Well, you know, I'm usually one who doesn't say much, but I really have to say <coughs> that Greg Beckman is a wonderful mm -hmm. and very passionate presentation. And AFSEED sounds like it is something that's needed throughout our state. Mm -hmm. And once we can get it in our state, we must take care of home folks. Mm -hmm. Then it can go up. Mm -hmm. But it is wonderful. And no child can be ready to score where he or she needs to score until he can, uh, until the child is successful at the beginning. To go along with Lisa. And, you know, I started in elementary school, and I do know that one skill builds upon the other, and you can't skip over any of them and expect to achieve success. So thank you so much, and please just, and so glad you haven't lost an art. Just continue to sound for it. Thank you. Greg, we love you, and really appreciate it. I'm going to now throw it back to you. You know what? I think we've heard all the wonderful things, and I think we could go on and on, because I have, I mean, you mm -hmm. touched me, and I think it's probably one of the, the best presentations mm -hmm. during my time on board that's really just grabbed me, and I'm sure everyone in this room in this building mm -hmm. sees the value. I think we need to do standing ovation. Mm -hmm. <laughs>